Imagine that you were charged with a crime you did not commit. The prosecutor offers you a plea deal, which would mean considerably less prison time than if you risked a jury trial. Would you accept the plea, even if it meant falsely admitting guilt? This hypothetical situation is likely familiar as the dilemma of traditional plea bargaining, in which defendants are required to admit guilt in exchange for a lower sentence. Of the over 3,000 people exonerated to date through the National Registry of Exonerations, almost a quarter accepted guilty pleas for crimes they didn't commit. But what if you could accept the plea while still saying you were innocent? This is known as the Alfred plea, a type of plea not a lot of us have heard about, despite it being more common than jury trials. Unsurprisingly, the Alfred plea is controversial among legal scholars. Some argue that it actually increases the number of innocent people who accept pleas. In addition, judges are more likely to see defendants' claims of innocence as a refusal to take accountability, leading them to impose longer sentences. In contrast, advocates of the Alfred plea suggest that it can benefit defendants who want to avoid the shame and embarrassment of admitting guilt. I wanted to investigate the truth behind these largely unexplored claims, and my dissertation is the first empirical study of perceptions and ramifications of the Alfred plea. My work started with two key questions. Do Alfred pleas increase the risk of innocent people accepting pleas? And do they spare defendants the stigma usually associated with accepting responsibility for a crime? To answer these questions, I recruited 2,000 participants for my dissertation research. First, in an online mock plea bargaining scenario, participants imagined they were accused of wrongdoing, of which they were either innocent or guilty, and offered either a traditional or an Alfred plea. I asked them if they would accept the plea or go to trial. Building on this initial work, I then had participants read about a defendant who was accused of wrongdoing and accepted or rejected either a traditional plea or an Alfred plea. I asked the participants what their perceptions of the defendant and his choices were. I found that although innocent participants were not tempted by an Alfred plea more than a traditional plea, guilty participants were. More importantly, I found that observers had more negative perceptions of defendants who accepted Alfred pleas. Alfred defendants were overall seen as less intelligent, competent, and honest, as well as less remorseful than other defendants. In short, the Alfred plea provided no benefits. Instead, and as expected, the perceived lack of remorse evoked the public's contempt. My findings suggest that defendants who seek to maintain their innocence may be tempted to take an Alfred plea, but to their own detriment. Rather than appropriately being treated equally to defendants who accept traditional pleas, Alfred defendants will be viewed less favorably and in turn treated more punitively, both by courts and by the public. My research brings into focus the disconnect between how the legal system intends plea bargaining to work and how the public perceives it. As my findings suggest, the Alfred plea not only poses problems for innocent and guilty defendants alike, but also points more broadly to the way the criminal justice system is deeply influenced by personal beliefs and perceptions, both by judges and the public. Thank you.